Okay, I've modified the Drinking Bird power generator. I've got multiple uh, loops of wire here to generate more voltage. If you watch the uh, millivolt meet galvanometer here, you'll see it jump up to somewhere between 10 and 15. I'm going to take a slow motion of that and see if we can pinpoint um, the time that it takes to get to a certain voltage. Is if you look at these wires here, they're first cutting across a corner of these magnets, which means they're not getting the full effect of the whole field. It doesn't do that until it gets about halfway and on down through here. So I'm going to try to modify this thing to get a better, uh, better effect there, take advantage of the field a little bit better by rearranging the geometry of this setup. Um, but it does work. You do get more voltage than we got with just a single loop of wire of that last video. Definitely more wires helps. The only issue with that is it's harder to get it through a very, very narrow magnet opening. So, without uh, hitting something. The reason for this uh, timer is what I'm going to try to do is plot the voltage I'm getting on the galvanometer versus time. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to do it, but we'll see and uh, and see what that profile looks like of that curve. That's what that's for. This is an Excel spreadsheet I made using data generated with the uh, galvanometer and that timer. Uh, my Actually, an iPad uh, app measuring in hundreds of a second. So I ran that app. Uh, recorded it in slow motion, slowed it down a little further, and was able to uh, look at the uh, millivolts versus time on the timer. And that's how I got this chart. But uh, here we're looking at millivolts. This is like 12 millivolts, and this is time in hundreds of a second. So if you look at this total time period here up to 60 hundreds, that's just six tenths of a second. And the time where it, it peaked and then flattened out for about a tenth of a second. Um, so we're really looking at a minuscule amount of time. All my data is over here. So not much power generated. Uh, do, really, we're doing this for fun. So we'll look a little bit further into this. I just thought you'd like to see this. Not all my ideas turn out the way I expect. Um, I've rearranged this uh, generator here. I try to make that a, a flatter uh, less curved uh, loop of the wire down here in the bottom and thinking that it would give me a better more uniform voltage generation as this uh, bird moves that wire through the magnet but what I found is um, as it goes all the way through the other end of this loop the other side tends to get impacted by the magnetic field which counters the voltage generated on this side so um, my original design actually worked, I think, better than this. So I'm not going to belabor this much more. Just wanted to point that out. It does work, as you can see on the galvanometer working. Um, but I also want to point out how I use these uh, bolts here to uh, prop up the uh, side of the drill press vise to get try and approximate the angle which this uh, device was moving through. So anyway, what we're going to do now is just simply uh, uh, take a look at the uh, voltage drop across um, some various resistors on this thing and see what that looks like, and uh, we'll take a look at that. Thank you. The voltage spikes so quickly, especially with this digital multimeter. Only way to see it is to slow it down to slow motion, so that's what this is for. And uh, we're going to take a look at some of this data here in just a second. This is a spreadsheet I created with the uh, bird generator uh, with and without the one ohm resistor using the uh, Craftsman 82170 multimeter for measuring voltage on the 200 millivolt scale. Ten measurements. This is with no resistor, fairly consistent, got an average of nine, just over nine millivolts. With the one ohm resistor, uh, an average of about 4.58 millivolts. To make sure this is repeatable, I re took the resistor out, repeated it, got 8.71 millivolts without the resistor, then put the resistor back in, got one point, excuse me, 
got an average of 5.37 with the 1 ohm resistor back in it. Okay, of Ohm's, for Ohm's law, um, current's equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. In this case, the resistance was 1 ohm. Let's look at just the resistor uh, data. First one, 4.58 millivolts, which is 0 0.00458 volts. And that divided by 1 ohm would give you 0 0.00458 amps. Repeated that with this other data, and I got 0 0.00537 amps. I did a slow motion screen recording using the digital multimeter. This is all the data all the way down to uh, 110 hundredths of a second uh, data points. Um, this is a chart of the data. Um, this data is way too erratic to do anything with. This is the time here. This is the millivolts across the one ohm resistor. And as you can see, there's too much delay, and I'm not sure what it is going on with that thing, but the analog galvanometer gave a little more, a little better results. Neither one is really ideal for measuring this, these small voltages. And uh, so, but anyway, just wanted to show this, and, but we're not going to do anything with this data here. If you look to the left, you can see we've got a 1 ohm resistor uh, with the voltage being... Uh, applied across that resistor. And we're measuring, using a galvanometer to measure that voltage drop across that resistor in slow motion with the timer so we can plot the data. And so we'll take a look at that here in just a few seconds. Graduated cylinders fill to 900 milliliters. Immerse this little bird down to the where his hatch is barely in the water. You really can't see it here, but it's about 946, so about 46 milliliters. This chart shows the plot uh, of uh, the uh, drinking bird using a galvanometer and a one ohm resistor. The voltage going across that one ohm resistor plotted the uh, millivolts here versus the time converted the uh, hundredths of a second to seconds. Kind of erratic, but we do get uh, an area under the curve. Of course, what we're interested in is really the the power being generated. Um, did some conversions using uh, v squared over r uh, for the power, and r is one ohm. So basically, v squared. And I converted everything to just volts, and got the data, calculated it in watt seconds, and uh, plotted that power. Uh, over time and uh, what I did was uh, used a trapezoidal method for, for uh, estimating the area under that curve and it's basically A plus B over 2 times H or the area of a trapezoid. Now if you look over here what we're looking at I converted this chart to a combo chart make it a little bit easier to see but uh, if you look at one of these sections of time here on the chart um, you got a voltage here, like voltage A, voltage B. Basically, you add those together and then divide by two. And that's like the average of if this was two separate rectangles. That's all that is. And multiplied times the height, which in this case is the time. And uh, that's how I got that estimated the area under the curve for the total amount of power. So, um, and what I did was, I just repeated every 26 seconds, the bird would take a drink. Uh, I won't go into all this data. Hopefully I didn't make any mistake, but it, uh, I came up with um, uh, so many watts per hour and, uh, and basically converted to kilowatts per day. Our house uses about 40 kilowatts per day this time of year. And uh, so what I came up with was that uh, if you, I looked at the volume of a drinking bird, it was uh, by immersing it in a, a graduate cylinder full of water, I got the volume of it, calculated the weight um, on the density of water, one gram per cc. T-Rex weighs about seven million grams, roughly. Assume a body density of one gram per cc, similar to a human, and I came up with 152,000, 54 drinking birds equivalent. So basically, um, what I came up with is if you use just toy size drinking bird generators, 
it'd be ridiculous, 654,171, or four large C6 size drinking bird generators running continuously to power my house. A better drinking bird heat engine generator that is more efficient could probably work with just one T-Rex size system instead of four. So uh, we'll look at a couple other things and uh, we'll show you that. Having your farmhouse plugged into a T-Rex size heat engine generator uh, could come with some drawbacks. One of them is possibly eating the farmer. Uh, the other is uh, scaring the farm animals. So, it might be a good idea to design a different style of heat engine generator, one that doesn't have thousands of gallons of methylene chloride that could create a hazardous waste dump. And uh, so anyway, maybe we'll take a look at that. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, uh, please uh, like the video and click on the subscribe button that'll appear here and uh, click on the links to our other videos. Thank you.